They'll be calling you a radical first before I read Megan Rice's epic, epic, incredible speech. Few things to clear up. One, all you contemporary rats and trolls that say, why are you doing these videos? Why, why are you wasting my time? So much of this is about my fight for my life. Showing the playbook on how to survive cancers against all odds, AML, leukemia, so many are going to get it. So much of this is historical, factual, documentation of the fact, as you sheeple don't see, but future generations are going to see. The post ignorance generation, so much of this is to apologize to them that all us baby boomers did not participate in the military industrialized complex, poisoning the earth, destroying the economy, destroying everything. You, I mean, so much of this is historical. So much of this is, you can't see. You're too dogmatic to see anything. And you rats and trolls, be careful who you fuck with. I want to read Megan's incredible, before I read it, thank you to the Outlaw Project. Thank you to the Alliance for Peace Y-12 at Oak Ridge in Tennessee. Thank you for Mother's Peace down there at Diablo Canyon. Thank you, Wasserman. Them are some great articles you wrote. I got to tell you, I really loved your article you wrote about Obama's drone attack. I, this needs to be historically stated today. As Megan Rice being sent for prison for trying to save your life, she didn't break any law. She says it perfectly in her speech. It needs to be documented in history because nobody's documenting. You know, people like Wasserman are documented in history. You know, people like Jan Brooks are documented. I have from day one. As I stood right here, I stood right here. It says, oh my God, leukemia. It's going to give you leukemia, leukemia right here, right here in Utah. Now we know I was being hammered. No wonder I got leukemia. So many of you are going to get it. And people say, Kevin, you need to rest. Let me tell you about rest with what I have in my body. Oh no, this wolf is chasing. I know the Cisco. I got pretty good results yesterday. The best I've had. I got a long ways to go. Long talks with my doctors. They know that it likes to rear right back up. So a lot of these people, they go home and you know, they think they got it whipped and they have their wife, you know, babysitting them and catering to them and vice versa. I've watched it. This fight doesn't work this way. This fight's artistic. This fight's intense. As I, you know, we had a long discussion at the hospital about my wolf spirit yesterday. Oh boy. And I got to tell you, this is extremely emotional. I'll try to get through it without breaking up. I was in the courtroom. The media that reported this historical time was local television and myself. They, it needs to be said right here, right now. As Carlsbad WIPP, the pilot program, the National Report Story is leaking, as all this nuclear nightmares go on, nuclear fission, oh, we opened the valve and just let it in. Accidentally, the valve's been opened the whole time. As that was happening, and I think Barack Obama, Monty, all these people are going to come to regret this so dramatically, what they did. They approved the loans for the nuclear plant, the first one of 30 years. So what does that mean? That means you and I are paying for our own demise and our death. Barack Obama is really going to look back in time. There's going to come a time. And there's one person that can save all of us. One single person. Pope Francis. He picked, I was at the two-year symposium in my two years, Pope Post Erickson Eugene, that Lonnie Clark and I organized last year when he picked the name, and I was so excited. I'll tell you why. Democrats and Republicans cannot overlook this guy. I got a hunch he's going to come out anti-nuclear at some point because he controls the brown vote in this country. And we've seen these neocon Kool-Aid fools who turn their back on the brown vote. Oh, are they going to pay? Barack Obama? Hillary Westinghouse brought them. Barry Antoinette let them eat yellow cake. You know, Megan Jr. said when he'll get involved when pigs fly. Yeah, maybe. But we got to keep trying. He's our only hope. If he comes out, the Democrats nor Republicans can, whoever freaking goes against him is done politically forever. Of course, they both need to be done politically ever because they're the same grotesque military industrialized complex. I'm going to read this. I'll try to get through it. This is powerful, this is moving, this is historic. Here is the prepared statement Megan Rice read to the court on Tuesday, February 18, 2014. Part one. As I said, absorbing the facial expressions of participants presenting in the hearing of January 28th, which I was in that courtroom sitting there on the 28th, I sense a clear sense of shared mental reaction during the arguments of the restitution 
evidentiary table submitted by the prosecution. I think we felt something of a master's compassionate concentration with the hypocrisy at this accusers. Luke 6, 5, 11, Mark 4, 20, 30. I was stunned that eight months had lapsed with apparently no conversations out of the court between the opposition sides and the court in the case and would have imagined that it had been resolved by negotiation during these delays and regulated to where it deserved to be disposed unworthy of evidence in any court of law. This very document, hold up exhibit one, is self-incrimination evidence for all of the world to see. It represents the microcosm, an enormous cloud of deception, exaggerated ex expeditions in time, energy, and cost under which Y-12 has hidden these 70 years since its inception. It reveals but a sample of the extortion by unaccountability for the unaccountability, profiteery, and blatant miscalculation over Y-12's entire evolution till today. Draconian extortion of the hard-earned labor of the people in this country over the last 70 years and perhaps before. It provides evidence why we are in deep trouble today. A perfect analogy to what Greg spoke of as the emperor's new clothes. Why can we not call a spade a spade? Why can we not admit the bare truth and just get on with what is humanity's possible transformation? This humanity constructed horrified monstrosity and eternally which has officially unimpeded involved into risk of perilous proportion to the very existence of this sacred planet and life as we have known it for though for whose transformation we already long to give our lives who or what is capable of naming and being heard to name the emperor's new clothes if not already named in countless ways and forms, when will we listen and face the truth? Part two. Good morning. Thank you, Judge Therpar, and each of you in this beloved community. We are so grateful this morning in the depths of our hearts, grateful to each of you for gracing us from your very busy lives. To be here once again, you coming here from Kentucky, Your Honor, and up from New Orleans, Bill and Anna, down from Michigan's Upper Peninsula, Annabelle and David, faithfully giving time and so much zesty, passionate energy and legal expertise in popular education for the tr sake of justice's sake and truth. On current status, and in international domestic law, and here also from a crowded date book at Yale Schools of Diversity and Forestry and the, Envi and the Environment, Dr. Mary Evelyn Tucker, to witness on behalf of our entire planet. A beloved community joins us in spirit from the four corners of the earth, speaking truth from pl people in places like Cyclus, Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Denmark, Finland, France, Belgium, Qatar, Bolivia, Alaska, Africa, Scotland, Ireland, Montenegro, Sierra, Sri Lanka, Matuteris, Berlin, and many places in between. These messages from the Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers came by post for this court. May I deliver them now? It is indeed fitting as the issue here before us today has touched with privileged risk for 70 years the very existence of our sacred Lo lovely home, which we all share and try to treasure our planet Earth, which many of us revere as mother. So thank you. We treasured the time, all you give in attending the trial in one way or another. This trial was exposed quite grotesquely in the evidence, thanks of the prosecutor's witness, that the truth about what is happening, that this one facility is part of what Christian Iverson says the U.S. has become one huge bomb factory, of which Y-12 is but one very significant part. We are grateful, as Annabelle Dwyer points out with the defense team of lawyers, that the details of the goings-on of Y-12 were revered by the witness for the government details kept mostly secret over nay to 70 years. The specific warheads being enhanced and modernized, the enormous quantities of highly enriched uranium material, Hume, H-E-U-M, Producers stored there in the very building. We are able, almost unknowingly, to reach, to touch, and to label with statements and symbols of truth. This altered Y-12's workers 
to keep has been kept secret for nearly 70 years. The secrecy began in 1943 when worker women by thousands could not tell fellow workers or families. Still now, secrets are kept between workers, officials, and managers. The secret The secret prevailed. By relentless to turn these United States into a superpower and empire, as German tried to under the Third Reich. When I was growing up to our generation, these were very evil terms. Has any empire aspiring superpower not declined, not fallen apart from exceptionalism into decadence? So we had to come to the facility to call it to transformation. Thank you for revealing these secrets as evidence. Many who were here on January 28th had attended Plowshares trials around the country, Your Honor, from the most recent in Tacoma, Washington. The disarmed now Plowshares seniors also, I allege, age from 8460. One Sacred Heart sister, Anne Montgomery, of happy memory, two Jewess, former Bill, Michelle and Steve Kelly and two grandmothers, Susan Crane and Lynn Greenwald. In many of these earlier trials, even the words nuclear weapons has been called classified and denied to be alluded to. Despite being components for weapons of mass destruction, contrary to the non-proliferation and other treaties and laws to which the United States is legally bound, and for which crimes we citizens bear shared responsibility by law to expose the opposition as crimes, when we know they are being committed. And still we have more room and reasons for gratitude, Your Honor, because recent laws by the U.S. Congress give you distress. You felt that you had to keep these jury convicted consequences bound, peacemakers as violent sabotagers, felons, accuse of serious damage in the national defense of the United States detention while awaiting sentencing, detention in a private contracted for profit rendition warehouse, which punishes and tortures sentencing people partly because of the enormous overcrowding courts and prisons in this country. These facilities are not efficient, overseen, nor accountable because of their experience of the illegally equipped conditions and inadequate training personnel in these for-profit warehouses. We know now how the United States said non-citizens are treated for nonviolent crimes of conspiracy and other medical drug laws as they exist, crimes endangered by the failed socioeconomic status which prevails today in the national security state. The direct fallout from gross mispending into maintenance of nuclear industrial complex of 10 trillions of dollars over these past 70 years. An economic system devoid of any outcome other than death, poverty for the masses in a debt-ridden country with obscene wealth for the less than 1% of the people, Indige individuals wealthier than the GNP of entire countries. And I would ask for more profiteering. We thank you, Judge Tharpar, for giving us the time to become inspired by truly great human beings, so patiently, enduring, flagrantly in human conditions. We can now report to you and general public who are the government of the conditions where people are experiencing punishment and torture as unsentenced awaiting changing court dates or places in federal prisons today. We have seen how this for-profit detention contract system fails to accomplish any kind of restitutive justice or rehabilitation. Women and men who are the victims of a nation impoverished by the violence and cost of an economic base of manufacturing WMDs and war making inhumane separated distance and poverty. Manage in compliance, in order, separated with contract with loved ones and families. I am grateful also for what Daniel Bergman called in a letter to me in Danbury Prison in 1998. My time under federal scholarship, we have tried to make the most of it. Have learned enough for two or three master's degrees and written and shrieved letters to and from enough to do a doctoral dissertation. We are active by the people who suffer under disempowering conditions of detention. Activated to initiate U.S. prisons reform, which calls for the transformation of minds and hearts from violence, violence of profiteering from the fallout of constant, unending war making by a military industrialized complex. Those engaged in the popularity of every more massive, powerful death dealing weapons, nuclear, chemical, biological, unarmed weapons, which rob the power, the 
pour and sabotage and pollute all of life and creation on this planet. Imagine the profit occurred by charges like mine, $15 for one 10 minute call to Washington DC from Knoxville detention facility. TN instant calls can be close to $3 each for 10 minutes. Or a sick call which can cost up to $15 to obtain a drop previously sanctioned prescription for a nightly Claritin tablet for controlling an allergy condition. Medical conditions denied to pass on from facility to facility as inmates are moved along to prisons. We are energized to call for life enhancement, altering projects like disarmament, depleted radiation, isotopes and toxins, and those which meet real needs, social, cultural, spiritual, environmental, restitution, healing, harmony, balance, and peace in nonviolence. May I close with a prayer and rendition of the ancient Hebrew country song, PS 98, according to Nate Merrill. As again, we thank you, Judge Thorpe, our honorable jurors, our defense team, lawyers on behalf of the government, whose crimes we as law-abiding citizens attempt to disclose, oppose, and heal. And for each of you, you and the most honorable, beloved community, a prophetic peacemaking regiment from who we receive hope and inspiration and encourage you to carry on as grateful participants in your honorable presence. Let us sing to the beloved new song. For love has done marvelous things by the strength of your indwelling presence, your right hand. We too are calling to the great things. We are set free through love's forgiveness and truth. Yes, for the steadfast love of faithfulness. Our ever-present gifts in our lives, all the ends in the earth we have seen, the glory of love's eternal flame. Make a joyful noise to the beloved, all the earth. Break from the into grateful song and sing praises, sacred the land, sacred the water, sacred the skies, holy and true. Yes, sing songs of praise, extolling love's way. Lift up your hearts with gratitude and joy. Let the voices of people begin blend in harmony. In unison, let the people's magnificent that belong. Let the waters clap their hands. Let the hills ring for joy before the beloved who radiates love to all the earth. For love reigns over the world and true and justice bring an order and balance harmony to the creation in keeping all this and just and fair. And we may go forth as your holy right to do things in love. MK3, LK7. Megan then asked the judge if it would be all right to sing a song. He, he agreed, then was taken aback as she turned to the audience and they rose to join her in singing. Sacred the Earth. Sister Megan Rice, February 18, 24, U.S. Federal Courthouse, Eastern District of Tennessee, Knoxville, Tennessee. I think the judge even wanted to cry. I think this is such a powerful, maybe, you know, the end to my three-year fight, you know, Megan Rice, this whole capitulation, the cancer in my body, standing right here saying it's going to give you the cancer so many is... It's been such an emotional time for me for three years, for all of us. For all of us. All I can say is how powerful is she and how iconic in time and history and space and what we have done, my path, her path, so many of our paths, we've done the right thing. You know, you, the trolls and the rats and the people who can come to us and whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've done the right thing. I know my soul and I know my heart. We've done the right thing. It's been so emotional. I've kept my composure through this thing. I was given two months to live. I mean, fighting back the tears every day, fighting back the wolf every day. You know, my activism, it had to be. Megan had to do what she did. Greg and Michael had to do what they did. I've had to do what I did. It just had to happen. Time and history and space were sorted out. You know, let our spirits and let our souls be free. My spirit and soul is so free right now. You don't even know. It's free. You know, people like Megan Rice have set me free. Maybe cancer set me free. I don't know. But I'll stay and I'll fight.